Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. After a six-hour meeting, the Israeli Security Cabinet, which is headed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, announced its decision to hold further airstrikes and other attacks on terror installations in the Gaza Strip and to renew Jerusalem's efforts to reach an arrangement with the Islamist Hamas organization. Following the Israeli Security Cabinet's decision to recommit to efforts to reach a long-lasting arrangement with Hamas, Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman announced his resignation and calls for national elections. Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Khariri blamed Iran's Lebanese proxy Hezbollah for what he called a big obstacle in efforts to form a new government. After a six-hour meeting, the Israeli Security Cabinet, which is headed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, announced its decision to hold further airstrikes and other attacks on terror installations in the Gaza Strip to renew Jerusalem's efforts to reach an arrangement with the Islamist Hamas organization. The Security Cabinet's decision was reportedly made without a vote after close to 48 hours in which more than 460 rockets and mortar shells were fired by Islamist Palestinian factions from Gaza towards Israel's southern communities, while the IDF struck some 150 targets across the Hamas-controlled enclave. It is important to know that both Egypt and Qatar worked tirelessly behind the scenes, applying significant pressure on the Islamist organizations to hold their violence, efforts that resulted in a pledge by both Hamas and the Islamic Jihad to stop all hostilities directed at Israel if Jerusalem would agree to seize all hostilities directed at the Islamist factions in the Palestinian enclave. The statement by the internationally recognized terror groups with backed assurances from Cairo and Doha apparently convinced the Israeli security cabinet to yet again evade an all-out war and seek the option of reaching an arrangement for a long-lasting cessation of hostilities. The decision, however, is perceived by many in Israel as a capitulation to Hamas. Shortly after the announced decision, hundreds of residents of the southern Israeli town of Sderot flooded the streets to protest against the country's leadership. People are here just had enough. They had enough. We don't have any security, any confidence. Uh, it's amazing that, uh, you know, we are such a strong country. We have all the abilities to strike Hamas within a day. And it's just losers. Meanwhile, in the Gaza Strip, Palestinian residents flood the streets to celebrate what is perceived in the enclave to be a Hamas victory. Uh, Hamas spokesman Fauzi Barhoum, who joined the Palestinian celebrations, declared the Islamist militant groups of Gaza have managed to outsmart the Israeli government. هناك جهود قطرية ومصرية ومية ساهمت بشكل كبير في تثبيت هذه التهدئة المقاومة ردت والمقاومة كسرت معادلة الاحتلال. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman announced his resignation today, asserting that he cannot accept the Israeli government's lack of action against the terror emanating from the Gaza Strip. During a special press conference at his Israel Beitenu faction in Jerusalem, the Israeli top defense official underscored that the decision, which was ultimately made by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, had no other meaning than capitulating to terror. Hamas, 
אלא כניעה לטרור. The outgoing defense minister also took the opportunity to call for immediate elections while accusing the prime minister, Bimi Netanyahu, of lacking what it takes to preserve the national security interests of the Jewish state. Now to the United Nations headquarters in New York, Israel's ambassador to the world body, Danny Danone, called on the international community to condemn Hamas for its indiscriminate fire towards civilian communities. The Israeli ambassador stressed ahead of an emergency meeting of the Security Council that was held last night with regard to the escalation between Israel and the Islamist organizations in Gaza, that the time has come to stop comparing Israel's actions to that of the terror organization Hamas. Ambassador Danone further underscored that all actions taken by Israel aim at protecting the Jewish state and its citizens, including operations that aim to preempt those who orchestrate terror activities against Israel. We take actions to protect our people. And when you know that someone is digging a tunnel or someone is planning an attack or a kidnap attack, you take protective actions. We will continue to take those actions, no matter where it will take place, in order to prevent future assaults on our people. In response to the Israeli demand for an international condemnation of Hamas, both the United States and France condemned the Islamist faction for its indiscriminate fire toward Israel's civilian communities. While the U.S. conveyed its condemnation through its State Department spokeswoman, Heather Neuert, France demanded of Hamas to immediately halt any attacks directed at civilians. That said, the French ambassador to the United Nations also urged Israel to stop any disproportionate actions against the attacks emanating from the Hamas-run territory, claiming it to be unjustifiable. Now to Israel's northern neighbor Lebanon, where Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Khariri blamed Iran's Lebanese proxy Hezbollah for what he called a big obstacle in efforts to form a new government, indicating that there could be no solution if it did not back down. Hezbollah, a heavily armed Shiite Muslim group backed by the Islamic Republic of Iran, has been demanding that one of the six Sunni Muslim lawmakers that are allied to Iran be given a cabinet position. Nevertheless, his designated Prime Minister Khariri has refused to give up one of the seats allocated for his mainly Sunni party. Speaking at a news conference in Beirut six months after a parliamentary election that triggered complex negotiations to form a government, Khariri warned that the consequences that the country would bear was upon Hezbollah's responsibility if a new government cannot be formed. أنا عملت يلي علي والحكومة جاهزة وفخامة الرئيس عون ودولة الرئيس بري بيعرفوا هالشي يتفضل الكل يتحمل مسؤولياته لا يمشي البلد Hezbollah, Israel's arch enemy that is labeled as a terrorist movement by the United States is expected to take three ministries in the new Lebanese cabinet its ongoing actions have delayed the formation of a new Lebanese government that must be formed before any actions can be made towards fiscal reforms, which the International Monetary Fund announced in June are needed immediately to improve debt sustainability in Lebanon. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.